Here we are, arriving at the fantastic Archerfield Estate on the East Lothian coast of Scotland. The first thing you come across is the beautiful 17th century mansion house. And then for a more modern twist, you could always go and stay in the lodges. But let's look at what the court app has to offer. First thing you find is a huge practice ground. And then it's a magnificent showcase facility. But let's see who looks after this, the course manager, Steve Cram. Right, great. We've, uh, we've got here onto the 18th fairway on the uh, Dalton course, and we've caught up with Steve Cram. Steve. Golf course manager, is that yeah, that's, your that's official correct. title? That's the official title. Steve, thanks for welcoming us here. Uh, beautiful place, Archerfield. The North East North certainly had a few programs here over the years. That's right, yes. Um, what's your role here, Steve? You know, you, you manage the two courses. Yes, that's right. I look after both the courses, uh, the staffing, all the machinery, all the the consumables if you like but yeah that's that's my role both the courses how many staff do you have here uh 15 15 staff and and you've had previous roles obviously in the northeast of england you remember stocksfield and a good yes. golfer at that club champion in the last uh, couple of years do all right yeah reasonable i would say reasonable <laughs> <laughs> and where else have you been other clubs uh working wise i started at slaley uh went to close house um then back to slaley for for a few years and mm -hmm. then then obviously up to to archerfield and, and how long have you been here now for, Steve? Uh, seven years. Seven years. Just about seven years. I mean, it's yeah. a lovely place to work, it has to be said. It is. Especially on a day with the sun shining. Every day is like this, Steve. Uh, Every day thing is The like thing is, you know, you say you've got 15 staff, but you've got a massive, massive acreage of land to look after. You've got a you've got a uh, big driving range or practice ground, short game areas. You've got all sorts of things to look after. So you need a lot of staff, don't you, I suppose, to look after that? Absolutely, yeah. And I suppose as well, it's 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 the work that you do. It's the level that you're trying to get to as well in terms of quality on the golf course. So whilst you have a big area you've also maybe doing a few more things that other golf clubs might not do you know because of the, the where we pitch ourselves at, with the green fee and the membership and all, all all that sort of stuff as well i suppose when you've got a membership like you've got here you you know they probably expect high standards all year round as well i would imagine well yeah that's right and i suppose you know the golf course drains really well so through the winter as well we still have medals through the winter so yeah there's there's that to it as well you know it, it, it's an all year all year round golf course right i'll tell you what i'm interested in i'm interested in what goes on on and around your green steve so we'll head up to the 18th green here we'll have a look at a few yep. things around the yep. green right, right steve so here we are on uh, on the 18th green beautiful greens i must say Good. and i think i think um a lot of members of golf remember visitors judge the condition of a golf course by the condition yeah, of the yeah, greens you know definitely. i think you can hide things on fairways you can have preferred lies or whatever it might be you can even hide on, on tee box you can't hide no. on a green. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, getting good greens is obviously hugely, hugely important. And I think, you know, your history of being at Slaley Hall, you've, you've had tour events there, you've had tour events yeah. here. So getting the right speed of green is, is hugely important. So yeah, how will yeah. you go about getting a green quicker or even potentially slower? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, there's lots of things you can do to get pace. Slowing them down is probably is a bit more of an issue, but but pace is, is there's lots of things you can do. So what what, what I do is we, we can double cut. Depends on what's going on, but you can double cut, you can roll. We top dress the greens weekly, so we'll put sand on every week. And that wouldn't be necessarily the case at every golf club, no. would it? You wouldn't be able to do that sort of thing. Again, we're lucky enough. We've got the resource to do it. We've got the manpower. We've got the resource to do it. So, so we do that. And that, that keeps the greens a bit firmer. So it helps with the pace of the green as well. And you mentioned the roller there, Steve. The, obviously, the daft yeah. machine that goes sideways. You know, I always think so, it looks funny when you see a greenkeeper going yeah, yeah. sideways up, yeah. up and down the green. Is that so that the, the, the you know, so the, the cut don't have to turn at the end? Or what's the reasoning yeah. for that, Steve? There's, there's obviously a knack to driving it, that's for sure. No, <laughs> the, the, the main reason is that you're rolling in front of you so your head's basically just going side to side so you're rolling rather than if you were going front to back you would have to keep looking over your shoulder to make sure you didn't miss bits and the, and the roller is that something well again it's, it's your personal choice but would you use that on a regular basis can that cause problems on the greens or um, well i use a, i do use a roller um on, on both courses three to four times a week um so it's a lot it, it's a lot but we, we do pencil tining as well so we, we try and relieve any compaction but it only rolls the top inch right, the okay. most it's not they're not classed as heavy rollers they're not mm -hmm. rolling all the way down but again you can compact that top inch and so you have to do I mean, we sand, which helps a lot, but you, you've got to do a little bit of tining as well to, to relieve that. Okay, and you've got a you've got a, a, a very old fashioned device here, stint meter, Steve, which yeah. I believe measures the speed of the greens. Right. Yes, it does. It, yes, these have been around for a long time. This one's a little bit beaten up, but yes, it's basically just a meter uh, long bit of metal with a with a hole in the top and a, and a bit of angle all the way down. And it's incredible when you consider the technology in golf, the stats and the figures. You know, launch monitors, all these things that a piece of kit like this still measures the greens that a lot yeah. of the players use as a gauge yeah, yeah. i suppose and yeah. whether they're 10 11 foot whatever they yeah. might be on the stint meter. a lot of clubs post the the, the stint meter readings if you like on, on boards and, and obviously if you're tour events it'll be there and um you know this is more basic if you go to an open venue if you like uh they'll they'll 
put little wind tunnels over the top of them to stop the wind effect on the ball to be a bit more precise. So, mm -hmm. but this is this would give you a fairly good gauge of what these greens are running at. Uh, let's let's see how this works, Steve. Um, okay. You you know you do the demonstration here. So first things to try and find somewhere reasonably flat on your green, and I mm -hmm. think we've got a pretty much a flat spot here, so it's not too bad. Okay. Three golf balls. We've marked an area that we're going to roll. Well, what do you expect this to be, Steve? I know you're probably hugely proud of your greens. Yeah. I'm hoping it's around about 10. We're, we're trying to keep the greens somewhere around about 10 on both okay. courses. Okay. Um, depends on weather. But it's basically, you put a golf ball in the groove and lift it up until it starts to roll by itself. Do that okay. three times. Yeah. Do you want me to do anything at this end, Steve? Just watch in case that ball hits the next one. Okay. Reasonably true. It's not too bad. Three times. That's gone off at an angle, but it's okay. A bit like your putting, I think. Absolutely. <laughs> right. So we take an average of those three balls somewhere around about. Probably there, I think. Okay. Again, you can, if you want to be really accurate, use a tape measure when you measure one way with the tape and then measure back the other way. But for, for a general rule of thumb, you, you can just do it this way. Again, three balls back that way. So, so this is obviously a relatively flat bit of green. Yeah. So that's what you aim for. Absolutely. To... See if we can get the flatter the better, more accurate. Yes, that was probably going to the T there, wasn't it? it? Was, I, didn't, yeah. I, mean, I didn't do my job. Okay. Yeah. So there's three. So we'll take an average. So one. Yep. This is three this is three, three foot, foot long. So okay. there's three foot. That's six foot. There's nine foot. So that's nine foot. So we'll take an average of, of probably those, which is probably the there. Tea, and it'll be pretty much on the T peg or just a bit shy of it maybe. So that's nine foot we're at. And because we've we've marked this, we're looking at ten. It's actually nearer eleven foot. Oh we'll be happy with that. Oh, we'll I know you're very proud of your green yeah, so. so so this is about eleven foot, which it's okay for a day like today because it's pretty calm, but imagine if the wind got up and we had a tour event and the tour event was stopped or paused, they, they would be going mad, you know? So you've got to gauge the greens and the speed of the greens for what you've got on Absolutely. your golf course so at that time. When we had the Paul lorry event, we kept them at 10 foot, mm -hmm. we went to 10.2 all and then all, all through the tone, but the last day was going to forecast to blow an absolute gale, so we didn't cut the greens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Went down to nine foot. And, and when you do have a tour event, whether that have been a slay late here, they just dictate to you what yeah. they want and you just supply very, it. Very accurate. Every green has to be the same. Right. So they'll say, I want 10.2. To get 10.2 on one green, you might double cut it and not roll it. The next green, you might have to roll it and double cut, so they're very accurate. So we're exactly. now going back to an exact science and using a device that isn't yeah. really that scientific, I suppose. Yeah, I think the more you use it, the more accurate you become with it, yeah. but yes. Yeah, correct. So, Steve, we, we touched on something before, which was what is under under the greens. You know what you're looking here, you're on a Lynx golf course, loads of sand, which I'm sure many golf clubs and head greenkeepers would, would be desperate for sand underneath. Yeah. Can we take a... I think you've yeah. got a device called a sampler. Should we have yeah. a look at a sampler? Yeah, yeah. Great, let's have a look So, at Steve, that. what's this device then? So, this is a sampler. It's a very basic one. Uh, you can get different types. You can get them where it's a wide shoot if you like but mm -hmm. this is just a it's a core sampler that's all it helps us every now and again we take cores see how the greens are doing underneath okay and this is this just literally will pull the soil out yeah yeah so you just push it in the ground well then let's have a look there you go okay so again i think spectacular try and hold it as it comes out yeah there you go and that's what you end up with okay so you're happy with what you're seeing there yeah it's doing all right yeah to be fair it's okay you can see all the different parts of the of the What's going on under the green? That's the original sand that was built on. Uh -huh. And as we go up, this is the 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 time that the greens have been down. So there's tip, different top dressings in there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's the thatchy bit of it, if you like. So for my my main part of this is how much thatch is in there and how dense is it. Okay. And that and thatch is the, the top. So thatch is the top part of the green where the is that the dead matter. It's, it's, yeah, it's the it's the roots and it's the the grass tissue that have died mm -hmm. um, and and just lie there do, uh, dead in the in the in the green if you like. So you're trying to dilute that thatch down all the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. okay. You're always going to produce thatch. So it's it's, it's, it's all it. very interesting. And I think you know I've always said to people if I was to do, to create a golf course, I'd probably look more what was under the surface that, than what, what was on top because on top is easy to change. This is obviously hugely, hugely difficult. I think what's underneath the green, well, what's underneath the green will determine how good the top is. Yeah. So you kind of just work on one and not the other. Mm -hmm. But I do know golf courses that, really high-end golf courses that probably struggle to do the right amount of aeration and all the rest of it because of uh, the amount of people that are playing and the amount of money that they're playing. So they do concentrate a bit more on the top, but I still believe that you need to get the underneath right yeah, as well right. for lots of reasons. So interesting, Steve. Um, uh, obviously, at the links course, we've got loads of bunkers. Can we just go and have a look at one of your bunkers now as well? Yeah. Fantastic. So, Steve, here we are on the bunker on the 18th green. And, and I know, you know, it's probably the bugbear of a lot of members of golf clubs Absolutely. is condition of bunkers. 
but from I suppose knowing you for a long time, I understand the difficulty and the upkeep of bunkers, and and you've probably got loads here being two links yeah. courses, so it probably does take a lot of, look, a lot of looking after, I would imagine. It does, yes. Uh, I think that in a links style golf course, you've got obviously reverted faces um, uh, on the bunkers, and you know all courses are a bit different. But the way we revert them, we only revet so far up, so mm -hmm. we've got probably about six or seven revets there, and then we let the faces go in, so so like that. So again, from a maintenance point of view. Got to build a bunker. Mm -hmm. Bunkers that are south facing, southwesterly facing. You're rebuilding them every two to three years. Right. Okay. Of the dry out, the, the wind gets them, the sun gets them. Because you regularly, obviously, oh, yeah. get as well the, the kind of grass on the green side of the bunker gets burnt off as well, Absolutely, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. You get sand splashing, all that sort of stuff. So you know, fly them on the bunker, strimming the edges, getting the weeds out of them. It's 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 you're endless. You're you're always at this. And here at Archerfield, we we rake the bunkers every day. Mm -hmm. And one of the big issues that we'll have is a ball plugging in the face right so we try and smooth rake the faces and then rake like fluff up the bottom if you like and what about sand depth steve again because i know you play all sorts of different golf courses and it, it, i suppose it's managing them so some green keepers might have to put a lot in they just haven't got the time and the manpower to be able to look yeah. after them like you have here at Archer Field. i think sand depth depending on the golf course and where you're at is crucial but the sand type is probably more an issue mm -hmm. so here at Archerfield, again you know underneath here there's another six foot of sand right. so it's sand you're on blessed. sand if you like. yeah, yeah, we're fairly you? lucky so there's no liners in the bunkers it's all it's all sand but you know you can go to some sort of more part and golf courses and you know you, people maybe mention the depth of the sand but it's more the consistency of it is the sand band binding together mm -hmm. is it too soft is it too hard it, it, it is really difficult and every golfer has a different point of view which, yep. which is fair enough yeah yeah but but that's the issues that you have the easy bunkers. excuse when people can't get out of bunkers though is they blame the bunker, the bunker. And probably the yeah, greenkeeper yeah, yeah. and the golf club yeah, isn't it, i suppose so and, yeah bunkers are high maintenance it takes a lot of people and it's all manpower it's not a machine going and every golf club's manpower. different steve aren't they you know if you I suppose a lot of the golf clubs in the northeast of England got three, four, maybe five. The odd one might have six greenkeepers. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it is hugely difficult Absolutely. for greenkeepers to manage them. You, you know, like I say, you're lucky here at Archerfield, I suppose. Very time consuming. And, and how how many bunkers are there here? Do you know? There's a test for you. Uh, <laughs> I don't honestly know. <laughs> there's a lot though, isn't it? I mean, there even just lot. around this green, you yeah, know, there's three yeah. or four three, three or four bunkers. So I uh, think there's somewhere in the mid sixties on both courses. Right, okay. So you're looking after 120 and then the practice yeah, yeah, ground yeah, and so on and right, so yeah, forth. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Right, that's fantastic. Uh, thanks, Steve. Right, Steve, so thanks very much for your time today. Um, no great coming here at Archerfield. I've always loved the place. I think it's probably 10 years now since I first came here, and yeah. I think it just gets better and better each time I come. Good. So, fancy a few holes now. We'll go and play nine holes, and let's uh, put, the, put, your, put your money where your mouth is, I suppose, and see if your course is exactly what you say it's going to be. Absolutely. I'd love to take your money off you, Steve. <laughs> Not a problem. Steve, thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.